Muriel assisting us with um, the chat line. So if you have any difficulty hearing or any technical difficulty, she can possibly help you through that. Put it in the chat. Um, the meeting, if it happens to end prior to us completing the Bible study, um, as she said in the chat line, you can always back in and, to, and continue. Um, we'll, as we go through, we will probably you know, try to get some responses. So probably by two to three people to, to share, you know, as we go through some of the questions. So please um, be open to uh, doing that. And I think uh, Minister Muriel has a setup where you can um, um, unmute yourself as needed um, if you want to share something or if you have a question. Um, so to keep that in mind. And uh, we want to open up in prayer tonight. And I know, Ms. Moss, you've been on the line. If you can unmute, can you just open us up in, in prayer for tonight? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Shall you want to begin now? Yes, ma'am. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now with thanksgiving on our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for keeping us through the crime that we have been dealing with. And we thank you, God, for the resources that you have given us so that we might still be able to read and study your word. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the coming together of the saints, Lord. And know that if people are not able to get on, they can hear the message later. And we thank God for yes. that. Lord, we thank you for the woman of God who is going to share the word with us, Lord. We open our hearts, Lord. Open our ears, Lord. Open our spirits so we may be able to receive those things that you have in store for us. Lord, we ask that you keep, continue to keep everyone safe, Lord God, and that you will continue to, to move our spirit to read and study your word as we get through these trying times. And we know, Lord, that this too shall pass, and we know that you are still with us, Lord God. We thank you for our safekeeping and we thank you for the marvelous works that you are doing. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And um, Minister Muriel, would you share a little bit of a song with us? Yes, ma'am. Um, and I know everyone might know this one, but it's uh, God Will Take Care of You. Uh, I know that we are in a tumultuous time right now but it is always a great reminder to know that god will take care of us um i'm only going to sing the first stanza okay. in the chorus uh, for time's sake but uh the message is very clear uh, be not dismayed whatever be time god will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide god will take care of you i'm a witness that god will take care of you through every or all the way he will take care of you. God will tell you. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for uh, sharing that song with us. God will take care of us. And I thank um, all that uh, work together, Minister Muriel, um, Minister Rodney, and Minister Hogan's and others to work to put this together so that we could meet uh, 
by Zoom in order to share the word of God with you tonight. Last week I did um, part one of fear. And so if you did not get a chance to uh, see that PowerPoint, um, I know Minister Hogan did send it to you last week. So you can review um, those notes. Our scripture is 1 Timothy 1 verse 7, which says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I think that's a really important scripture as, you know, Minister Muriel talked about God taking care of us, of realizing even though with the coronavirus and a lot of individuals going through other issues that God doesn't want fear to be the spirit that we take along with us, but he wants us to know that we have power that we have love and we have a sound mind. Okay, do this right. Okay. Oh. Let me go to the next one, Miss Muriel. Okay. So I don't know if anyone remembers that that show. Do anyone remember Fear Factor? It was a show a couple of years ago that they made where people would do different stunts. Sometimes they would get into different um, containers with bugs and stuff and want to see how people would um, react or respond. And they were paid according to how much they tolerated. So at the beginning of the show, you know, the host would always say, you know, they, these things are supervised as trained professionals. You know, it can be dangerous, so you shouldn't be attempting to do any of this stuff. And sometimes that's what fear brings along with it is the unknown, because you don't really know how you're going to respond or how things will work out. And that always brings a, a factor of fear, of anxiety, and worry. So, first question that we have. We deal with fears and anxiety on a daily basis, especially with the coronavirus, regardless of what's going on. So what is it taking for you to deal with some of the fears that you might have at this present time? And a couple of you can respond. How are you dealing with it? Or maybe you say not having fear, but. Um, this is Mr. Green. One way that I deal with, um, the lack of no fear is or one thing that's helping me at this moment is I don't have uh, cable TV, so I'm not watching the news. Okay. Being influenced by the way the world is kind of reacting to this thing. Not that I'm not taking it serious, but right. have that added um, anxiety or influence from the news media, how they try to push their different agendas uh, while we go through this ordeal. Okay, thank you for sharing. Anyone else? It, it definitely, the media is um, carrying information sometimes in the incorrect or not proper way. So you do have to be careful of what you're watching. Mm -hmm. Because those yeah. things can uh, stimulate fear or cause fear to come by how um, it's being presented. Anyone else before we go to? Yeah. Can you hear me, Reverend Stubbs? Yes. Hey. Um, listen, for me, I just have to keep reminding myself that God has everything under control. Okay. And I also have to realize that there are certain things that I do not have control over, but okay. I do know what I have, what I do have control over. Okay. And you have to understand those things that you have control over, then that's what you have to focus on. That's good. You know, it's like, um, I know that when I go outside, what I have control over is being safe. Right. Wearing my mask, right. washing my hands, Dance. those things I know to do mm -hmm. so that it's like, I've done all I can do, God. You have control now. Right. You know? so That's good. That helps That's good. me. That's where the sound mind comes in because God says he doesn't want us to have the spirit here, but a sound mind. So that when we do deal with going outside or 
um, you know, the social distancing and stuff like that, that we're doing things promptly like they're telling us, but at the same time not letting the stress of the life, you know, taking us into that fear factor. Anyone else before we move on? Yeah, I wanted to add that just reminding myself of God's truth. Uh, the world's truths might look really scary, but reminding myself of God's promises that he says that it's in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Forsake you. Um, and that he will hold me with his righteous right arm. So when I'm fearing and just in that state of mind, I'm mm -hmm. reminded of God's truths. Yes, yes. Excellent. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so we talked about um, the truth of God and that, that truth, the word of God is the truth. Sometimes we have facts and things that, you know, they tell us this toll of those that may be dying or dealing with the COVID-19. Uh, and sometimes because of those facts, people can cause you to fear. But when we have the truth of God, like Minister Gammon said, then those things can cause our fears to be settled. And that's where the faith comes in. That's very important because faith and fear can occupy the same space. And um, like um, one of the ministers said, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. So we know as the people of God, that God gave us his word and he gave us his truth. And he told us what, to walk by faith, not just talk faith, but to walk by it. And that's a little bit different because people can say a lot of stuff until they go through. But God told us it, without faith, it's impossible to please me. So you can't just talk it, but you got to walk this thing out and especially with the, the COVID virus, with the um, length of time that it's been with us, you know, that is definitely a walk. It's not just you talking your way through it. Mm -hmm. And in Romans, it talks about how you build your faith. And the way you do is by what? Reading that word of truth, listening to it, hearing it, because faith comes by hearing. Right. And as you hear the word, then that's when you have to definitely apply it also. Doesn't it also entail getting out of yourself? If you're, oh, if you're sitting in your head all the time, mm -hmm. you're going to constantly have that fear. If you're constantly telling you, oh God, oh God, oh God, versus yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, versus, yes. you know, and, but again, if you stay in your head, you, that fear will constantly take over. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so you got to learn how to, again, I, I like what um, um, Reverend um, Gammon said, you have to rely on the promises of God. Yes. He told us, he says, if my people would do A, B, C, and D, right. this is what I will do. Yes. You know, so anyway, Definitely. we got to get out of our head and stop talking to yeah. ourselves. Talk to somebody yeah. else. <laughs> yeah. Talk to, sometimes talk to somebody that's going to encourage you. Encourage you. Absolutely. Absolutely. People will discourage you or say things that's not proper. And we know that the enemy is, um, he has the power of the air. So he deals with where you are in your mind. So he will bring those things that cause the fear to come. But um, like y'all mentioned, making sure you're applying that word is so important. And spending time in the word is so important because that he said that, that fear of man and the issues that it can bring, it can bring torment. But if we begin to fear the Lord and respect the truth of the word, then that perfect love, what can cast out the fear and cast out the worry. So um, if you're facing issues and we know that we're facing this COVID, you have to go back to the truth. You have to go back to the word of God, because that's going to be your our keeper uh, during this time. Because if you focus on you, like um, Miss Williams said, then you're going to um, lose out on what God is trying to get you to. Anybody else on that? So when we talk about fear, there are different types of fear. 
and uh, respecting the Lord is one type of fear, the fear of the Lord, respecting his word enough to apply it. So not that you always just in awe of God, but in that you fear him or respect him enough that you're going to apply the word of God over your situations. Um, because um, in Psalms 118.4, it says, let them that fear the Lord say his mercy endure forever. God is the one through his mercy that's going to see us through, through every situation that we face, regardless of what it is. So definitely we'll have to bank on the truth of God and bank on respecting him. And we know that um, acknowledging him in all our ways, and, and um, that goes back to what Ms. Williams was saying, getting out of your head and how you would actually handle it. What does the word tell us to do? That's a type of respect. Even as it is with when we respect our parents or our family members. Hello? Yes. I'm yes. Not. This is Ms. Dasher. Psalm 91. Then yes, ma'am. And um, no evil shall be from you, but not shall any come near your dwelling, or he shall give his angels. I'm sorry, angels. Yes, ma'am. Charge over you. Yes. Yes. That's, that's, longer than that, but that's my um. um that's helping me through my day. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. That's a wonderful word. That's what you can do when that fear comes. Is go back to that word of God in Psalms 91. It's an excellent one that to know that God has a covering. He has the angels. He has his word. Um, because he um he's there with us um through our adversity and those times that we're going through trials. That that's when our faith can grow in him. Anybody else of what you do when what you go to? Miss Dasher shared her scripture when she is feeling the fearful or afraid. Anyone else? I sing songs of praise. Okay, that's a good one too. That helps me a lot. Yeah. Worship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Peace yes. is important. Yes. I have one. Yes. I write. Write in the therapeutic for me. So. Okay. And not just write anything, but you read the word of God and then you meditate mm -hmm. on it. And okay. then you allow God to speak to you. Yes. That's good. Having that book, and we would call it um, for us a book of remembrance, where we would write down uh, good things in my book that I have, I only write good things, not negative things, not things that didn't go well. But in my book of remembrance are all good things. So when I go through issues or circumstances, sometimes I'll go to that book, that's things that happened three years ago that I can read up on and say, wow, if God took me through that, I know he can take me through anything else. All right, go to the next one. So talking about different types of fear that people might um, deal with. And these are all the fears that we know that we can't have as humans, but these are some of them that we might deal with. Um, the, the fear of failing. And sometimes because of how we look at ourselves, like uh, Ms. Williams said, sometimes um, we're more reluctant in following through with the issues or things. And, uh, we have that fear of trying things because we have that fear of failure. So that's one of um, the common fears, fear of success. Some people may fear reaching a goal because they're not really sure, you know, what that reaching that goal would bring to them or if they're going to stop um, trying on other things. So a lot of things can come up to even uh, make you afraid to reach out. Right. And 
I'll go to the others if it's nothing else on those two. And this is by Debbie McGrarren. The fear of the unknown, which is something that you know, a lot of people um, saved, unsaved are dealing with, especially with the COVID virus at this time, doctors, providers, nurses, patients, you know, within the hospital, it's really causing them to have some stress related to not knowing exactly everything concerning the virus. So it can paralyze you. It can uh, cause you not to think properly. So actually going back to that word and making sure that you have something solid you can stand on is important. Um, sometimes people have a fear of commitment, sometimes because of past hurts or past situations, they deal with that. And then the fear of rejection, sometimes because of low self-esteem or feeling that others won't accept them. So not only are you dealing with the fear of the COVID, but you're dealing with people that are dealing with some other fears, you know, people with health concerns and, and issues with their, their homes, people with financial issues, you know, um, relationships not going right. So along with the COVID, you got some other things that can also impact you. So the importance of having something stable like the word, the truth, um, is important. If nothing from those will go on. You have to remember that fear and faith, both of them are strong beliefs, okay? Um, only difference is one of them can be detrimental to you. The faith can build you up. Um, when fear comes in, it can nullify your faith in God. But that faith in God can bring hope and it can bring you up to a point where you can stand. But fear can bring torment and it can bring despair. So remember, both of them are strong is according to what you choose to dwell on because God already told us he didn't give us that kind of spirit. So if we focus on the love and the sound mind. Um, we, I think we can get through um, our issues and concerns. Anything else on those? Talking about faith and we know in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith. Faith is what? It's the substance of things, what? That we hope for, but we don't see it yet. We don't see an end of COVID right now, right? But we have faith and we believe in God, that he's working behind the scenes and, uh, and causing things to come together so um, uh, this can be resolved. So God is always working in our favor. Um, and faith is that absolute belief that God is um, working and supporting us. And so one of the greatest things I think for me when I was studying about fear and faith is that it doesn't come even come from us. God said he gives us a measure of faith. Everybody, every child of God, we all have a measure of faith, okay? But it's according to what we build on it. Are we building on it with the truth? We're building on it with news from uh, the TV or from a social media, what are we building on? So we have to make sure that we're building on that word of God. Anything else guys with that? So um, some other definitions with fear is, fear is a denial that hope that God can take care of us. When we let that fear come in, it's like saying that God is not there. Um, but God is going to be with us. He said, I'll be with you, what, forever, okay? He's that same God that opened the Red Sea. He hasn't changed. And sometimes we don't recognize him being in our midst, but sometimes when that faith comes in and we begin to trust in the truth and the word of God, he can bring what? Peer, um, that peace that we need. But fear brings what? Unrest. It can bring torment, it can bring stress, it can bring health-related issues, it can bring emotional breakdown. So when that fear comes in, God said, I didn't give you that because it can do things within even your physical body 
or your spiritual mentality that, you know, it can throw you off. So just remember that, that God gave us faith. And he what? He gave everybody what? A measure of faith. So we all have faith. Everybody got faith, right? Amen. <laughs> Gotta have faith, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a discussion y'all can actually, you know, after this Bible study, because I know we're limited with time, you can review some other scriptures about examples concerning fear, people that overcame fear. But for now, anything, examples from the Old Testament or New Testament concerning fear that, um, that helps you a person or a character that went through fear or had to deal with it and how it impacted them. Any particular story that you'd like to share? So before they share, if the meeting cuts us off, um, just remember, go back and click on the same link that you used to uh, enter so that we can continue. Well, I'll, I'll share this one. It, just remember when the disciples were on, on the boat with Jesus and Jesus said, we are going to make it to the other side. We are going to make it to the other side of, of this um, water. And during that time, a storm arose. And, you know, Jesus was, he just sleeping, he doing what he do. You know, he wouldn't even work because he knew we're going to make it to the other side. And, and he, they woke him up and he asked him, where is your faith? You know, but he did rebuke the wind and everything. And immediately they were on the other side because he promised. God has given us promises within the word of God that he stands on. He's not slack concerning one promise, but everything that he's put in this book will come to pass. He said, the world will fail before his word would fail. So remember that we always have um, confidence. We can always have confidence in the word of God. Anybody else? Any other examples? Of course, uh, David. Okay. David had to um, show a, a, an enormous amount of uh, trust in God. But I think uh, David would be a prime example of one that did not fear but was really strong and moved forward in his actions. Um, did you want, did you want someone who was in fear or someone who did not? No, either, either one pastor. Okay. So David would probably be a, gr a great example of one that, um, uh, that not that he overcame it because he was confident, but mm -hmm. I think his, um, uh, his, uh, I guess, strong show of, uh, a desire to, to defeat the the uh, the giant was was quite evident. He didn't back down. Right. That's good. That's a good one. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, Romans eleven twenty. Um, yes, because of the unbelief. They were broken off and used and by faith. Do not be huge, H and U, halted, halt but fear, with fear, by faith. Okay. So overcoming by faith it is important because when you let that fear come in, it can. Um, be I'm sorry, to what God wants to do. I'm sorry, my eyes shifted up. That's okay. Um, it's right. It's by faith. Do by not faith. be healthy, but fear. So okay. I was just thinking, maybe you have to have more faith to not be worried about being afraid because God always there for you. And he'll never be able to save you. And he's a blessing to our life because we're still here. Amen. And we're still uh, depending on him and we lean on him, not on our own understanding, but trust and believe in him. God, everything going to be all right in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Very good. Very good. Well, we're going to go on. If you, if someone else has another one example that comes to mind, just, you know, we can go back and discuss, okay? 
regardless of what happens, we really have to put our trust in God. The scriptures have already told us if he cares when a bird from the air dies, he knows when a bird dies, he knows every hair on our head. Know that God's gonna work on taking care of us. So, you know, his power is great. He's omnipotent. There's nothing too hard for our father or our God. So, you know, have faith in him um, and, and we don't have to fear those things. All right. So when you've lost your way, God can make a path for you. He's just that way. As Psalms 119, 105, his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light, what? To our pathway. If you've lost all hope, guess what? God says, I can what? Turn it around. And that's Isaiah 43, verse 19. He said, I'll do a new thing. I can cause water to come in a dry place, in a dry land. I can do anything. So even though things seem like it might be drying up, finances aren't where it should be with you, God says, trust in me, depend on me, don't fear. I can work those things out. When we've lost trust, Remember that God restores all of his promises. And this is one of my favorite um, scriptures, Numbers 23, um, 19. God is not man to say what is false or the son of man that his purpose may be changed. What he has said, will he not do? And will he not give effect to the words that come out of his mouth? All right, his words never return void. Even when we speak it, it's, it's power in that. Okay, he'll keep his word. So even when you don't see it, guess what? God is still working. Even when you don't feel it, what? He's still working. He never stops what he's doing. But God is always there to make the difference. So that's what I have for tonight. But if you have some other examples or you want to talk a little bit of, about how to build your faith um, and come against that fear, we can do that now, you know, in the moments we have uh, before we uh, close in prayer. So anyone else have any wisdom concerning uh, fear and dealing with um, that spirit of fear or building up your faith? I think, um, you know, a lot of times when you uh, kind of like slow down and um, you get, I mean, when you get idle and you're not really exercising yourself in prayer or reading your scriptures or whatever, but I think that's another way that the enemy, of course, um, kind of like dumps a lot of fear when we're away from that, um, our safety net, which is the word of God or prayer. Yeah. So um, we have to make sure that we uh, are always uh, fully equipped with the word of God, the things that God has put in scripture or, or for us to actually um, be strong. Um, and uh, so I, I, I like to be, uh, of course, active um, spiritually, because I think that really helps me um, build my confidence as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, Dubs, can you hear yes. me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, this I have to agree with John Green. When when all of this began, I did not have television, so I wasn't okay. fed all of that stuff. So I was just so happy for the break. It was like yes. <laughs> All I was concerned with was that I was just too happy for this break that I I really wasn't even taking on the whole corona thing. I okay. probably, when they started to talk about the five G's. Yes. That that put a little something something because you know, the five G theory that okay, I could see that. Right, right. And so uh, that made me a little something something. But then overall I'm just saying I'm just realizing I I'm at peace. Oh good. 
That's what we want to be. If I had small children in the house, right. I would probably be nervous or something, worrying about them and worrying mm -hmm. about protecting the children. Right. That, that would give me fear. But I guess That's because it. right now my house is to myself, me, yes. my son, and I, so I don't have the fear. I got Kimberly policing me every minute. All right. Reporting mm -hmm. on me, but um, if she thinks I went out somewhere, but, but okay. I, I just thank God for the peace. Yeah, uh. and and even if you have, I, I don't want people to fear if you have children or if you know you're home with family because God can keep you regardless of what your environment is. He's a keeper, and and he can uh, do those things that you might need done in your home. So, regardless of what your situation is, God. God is able. Uh -huh. um, I see some things in the chat box, so I'm going to um, mention a few of them. Uh, some of the stories that they said that um, represented fear and uh, that someone, I can't see the name, but someone talked about Elijah when he was running from Jezebel, you know, because here's a prophet, a man of God. He just called down fire from heaven. And you know, cause rain to come, and then when he hears about this woman Jezebel trying to kill him, then he goes and runs, what, and, and hides. You know, so things can change, and know that you know the enemy can still bring stuff in. So, um, like Pastor said, you have to be consistent um, with um, keeping the word of God um, there. And um, the other person mentioned Jonah. Uh, when he was on the boat and the men were fearful because you know the the boat seemed like it was going to turn over but as soon as jonah did what he was supposed to do as he was disobedient you know then the seas calmed and it did cause other people to come to god and that's one thing that i'm noticing you know at work more people are coming and saying pray for me and these are people that's catholic people that are jewish people that you know don't believe in jesus but I, I got to pray in Jesus' name. This is my break time. We're going to take a break and we're going to pray. But it, it's um, pulling people, I think, more to God also in that they know that it's some unknowns and that always causes people to fear. Um, let's see. Someone mentioned the spies of Jericho. Um, and when they went and heard the report about the giants and they came back and bought a, a bad report back to the people which caused people to what to miss the promised land so we have to watch what we're saying and what we're speaking that's important so um as believers we should be unshakable in his word um the Almighty knowing that he can bring about those provisions. And that, that was Minister Gammons that mentioned that. So those are, are, are excellent um, stories and examples from the word of, about, you know, fear and how we can actually overcome it is um, following God and doing it the way he's called us to do it. Um, hey, so, Ms. Stubbs. Ms. Stubbs, yes, I was going to mention with, with the, the spies of Jericho, you know, they were also very prominent um, people that were chosen mm -hmm. from um, their respective tribe. And with that, when you carry that kind of clout or mm -hmm. when people look to you, you yes, have to be very careful. And that's what really was aggravating with, with those spies because they did have um, uh, that clout that would uh, cause the people to turn from what God had already said. And so that's another thing about when you rise in position, you got to make sure you don't use your position that yes, will be sir. counterproductive uh, in terms of what God has already said. Yes, that's important, very important. And, and important for us to exhort one another daily. And so the communication with each other is, is really important because that exhortation does build you up. It says, so you won't be hardened by the deceitfulness of 
of sin or what's going on around you. So keep it in contact with the people of God. And like Pastor said, people that's going to speak the right things in your spirit also and not speak to that fear is really important. So I think we have a few more minutes. Um, I had a couple. I had yes, ma'am. So in James 5, it talks about the prayer made in faith will make the sick person well. Um, and I, so I've been kind of reciting scriptures that are faith speaking. Uh, also, when that came to me, I didn't even read it, just popped in my head. And it's in Matthew 21 when Jesus said that if you would, you can speak to the mountain and say, be removed and cast into the sea. And so whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So just speaking those words of faith. Thinking it. Because people are sick and people are dealing with a lot right now. I know I have yes. to work and it's every day there's something new at the nursing homes. Yes. So, but I still keep praying and yes. speaking words of faith and believing God can heal. I mean, some people would not be healed in this life, but they can be healed after. I mean, we have a great hope to look forward to anyway, regardless of what happens on this in, on the earth. Um, but just keeping speaking words in faith and keeping my spirits up. Um, that's good. Word is good. That's, that's important to speak it. Mm -hmm. It comes out of your mouth. That's power, life and death. It's in the power of the tongue. And Minister Cal Enoch wrote that, you know, um, to avoid fear, it, it's important that we do take an inventory of where we are so that um, we're able to recall the goodness of God. Because sometimes mm -hmm. fear and anxiety come up, we forget what God has done. And she was saying it's important to remember those things that he's done for us. Also, when you have faith in God and your belief is in him, and you stand on his promises, no matter what comes into your life, you will stand strong. In Second okay. Kings, um, the story about Elisha, and mm -hmm. he told a lady she was barren, her husband was right. old, she had a kid, and the kid died. Everybody, she said, I'm going to see the man of God. And everybody asked her, he, she, she, they asked her, what's going on? She said, right. all is it's well. well. It's well. All is well. And she yes. believed that to the, to the depths of her soul. Yes. All was well. Yes. And, when, you know, and it was. It, but she, that's what, that was where her faith was. She says, uh-uh, uh-uh. Man of God, you didn't give me this, this son for him to die? Right. And he died? Right. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. All is well. It so is no well. Face, all is well. It is well, saints. It is well. All is it well. It is Absolutely. well. Absolutely, all is well. Yes, <laughs> all is well. So we're, we're not going to let fear or, or any of those things overtake us. We're going to believe in faith. We're going to believe in news, which is the word of God. We're going to work on encouraging each other and strengthening ourselves in our faith, but helping to encourage our brother and sister and those that are in the world that don't know God or don't know Jesus. You know, it's a, a time that we also can be a great witness for the Lord because people are looking for some foundation that's solid because they're hearing so much. Mm -hmm. So really important that we be that light right at this time. Okay. So we're going to just remember, you know, it is Wednesday night. So those that would like to give online, um, you can do that on the website. Uh, you can still give your offerings, um, your tithe. Uh, so encourage you to do that uh, when you can and um, continue to uh, pray and uh, spend time, like Pastor said, they be consistent with God. Okay. So, Minister Gammons, anything else? No, ma'am, that is all. Okay. Um, Pastor? Yeah, I know Mr. O's on the line. Minister Court um, was trying to get on, but she said she had some difficulty hearing. But I want to thank everybody. This is new for us, the, the Zoom, but I'm, I'm hoping that the, the word was a blessing to you. Um, and just remember to apply the word as you go about your daily life. Pastor, you want to close us out? Uh, yes, I'll close out. Let's pray. And uh, before I pray, you can go ahead and just put your 
uh, prayer requests up before the Lord and um, we'll agree with those requests, but whatever you want to whisper to the Lord, go ahead and whisper it to him. We're going to uh, say a special prayer for Sister Ingrid's daughter, Maxine, who is an RN uh, who just went to New York yesterday to help with those patients in, um, in New York. So we want to keep her covered as well as all the other nurses and doctors and first responders, clerks. Father God, we do thank you. We do praise you for uh, uh, the Bible study tonight on fear. Uh, Lord, we pray that we'll take everything to heart. Uh, Lord, it will apply now, Father, what you have taught us through the uh, woman of God. Uh, Lord, that we will also be able to balance our lives without fear, that we'll be able to focus without fear. Uh, we'll be able to move forward without fear. We will remember all that you've done for us and times pass, oh, Father, when fear tries to raise its ugly head. Uh, I pray, Father, that you would uh, cover the body of Christ, the people of God, uh, cover those special requests that uh, we've whispered before you, uh, cover uh, Maxine and all the other uh, uh, first responders, nurses and doctors and clerks and people that are on the front lines in New York. Uh, we pray now, Lord, that you will move by your spirit, not just in New York, but throughout the United States, throughout the world, where uh, things now are are not normal in, in so many of our lives, oh, Father, where they like they used to be. So we pray, Father, that you would now, Lord, uh, cover and strengthen and bless and, and heal, oh, Father. We pray for miracles for those that may be on ventilators or for those that may be in ICU. Uh, we pray you cover them now, now, strengthen their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, prop up all of those that are working. We know that they are working uh, a number of hours straight. So we pray you be their strength, oh, Father. Uh, to help them to get through uh, their daily uh, day uh, of, of work and activities that they must uh, complete. Uh, we pray that you would guide all of their, the hands of the surgeons, those that are uh, working. Uh, we pray that you would touch their hands. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us as a church. Uh, bless the work now, Lord, that you entrusted into our hands, oh, Father. Let us do it with the, all of our ability, the best of our ability. Uh, I pray for those that may be sick in, in our congregation that you would touch them. Uh, those that uh, are dealing with some complex uh, situations and issues, uh, I pray for those that uh, have uh, been furloughed from their jobs. I pray, Father, that you will uh, take care of each and every person. Uh, never let us lack in anything, oh, Father, but financially meet all of our needs. Father, we just praise you, we glorify you, and we thank you. For all things, continue to bless us uh, and bless those that will be giving oh, online. Oh God, bless and multiply the gifts. We thank you and we praise you for all things. Cover us and keep us and protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Isaiah forty one ten. Remember that scripture. You can review it in, in in your Bibles. Do not fear, God says, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I would uphold you with my righteous right hand. So remember, God is always there for you, saints. And he's not going to leave you. He's going to be there forever. So you don't have to be. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed Amen. night, everyone. Amen. Miss Stop. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen, amen. And having all this time, I was able to clean out my closet and I found a check to the church that I never turned in. So I need the post office. What is the post? <laughs> I will text you the post office. Get right the <laughs> the post office box. You want to write it down now? I will yeah, give it to me. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. It's post office box. Three, my five, niece seven. is home now. Thank y'all for praying for my niece. Two, three, four. Okay, great. Four. Repeat that again. She's home. Post office box, three, five, seven, two, three, four, Gainesville, Florida. Three, two, six, three, five.
Got it? Yeah, I said that was a check all the way from October, <laughs> stuck in his closet. <laughs> Well, yeah. thank God that you're uh, yeah, thank able God. to clean this closet and found a check, a nice big check, too. <laughs> Bless you, Miss Wright. Well, go ahead and share, Miss Wright. <laughs> I'm saying God is good. God is good. Right. God is good. Yeah, I'm organizing, <laughs> cleaning up, organizing, found a check. God oh, is okay. good. God is good. Yeah. Hey, Pastor. Yes. Um, mom and dad want to know, is 6 a.m. prayer on the same um, meeting? Uh